Roberto. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, thank you so much for uh, all your presentations and uh, for, uh, well, to contribute to this discussion. I have a question for you. Uh, in the beginning of, uh, of your presentation, you give the impression that uh, we have to do away with governments, that governments don't really have well, being very pragmatic, they're not doing much, and therefore we should just forget about them and carry on. Is that what you think, or did I understand? Uh, let's say that this is uh, what we are doing. Like, I'm quite proud to say that in the five years or four years I've been working in Delhi, anything I kind of facilitate or build didn't get one approval by the government including our office. But um, that doesn't say that I don't think the government should be involved. In fact, I don't think that anything can be done if the government, at the large scale, if the government not, don't get involved. What uh, we face, it was like a staggering, uh, as we start, we couldn't do anything with the government, and so we realized that we needed to find a way to do something without the government, just to show that things can be done. So we are act I didn't go in my short presentation into the debate of all the planning and what needs to be done to make this space also like the urban planning level, like more uh, inclusive and efficient. But we are using this kind of small achievement uh, to then do policy advocacy with the government. Like for us, like training Mason, uh, now we are uh, doing uh, the research with the JLab of MIT, he will be a way to, um, to get data to say this can work, this could be the way, and then hopefully uh, have the government like to implement this kind of thing. So it's a way really to, to get data to do policy. Reports. Hi, thank you. Uh, I did write down that. <laughs> well, thank you for all your uh, presentations. They were great. So I have two questions, one for Marco and the other one for Ronan. Uh, I am Rosa. I am a PhD uh, researcher here at OTV at PK2. Um, so, Marco, in your community, the pictures you had, you had women in some meetings and sometimes men when it was like the working part. So I wanted you to ask, uh, ask you to reflect a little bit on gender issues in your work and in the participatory approach and the process. Uh, and to run them, I think it's a really impressive research and, and the, the information you have collected. I've done, and we all research about informal settlements, and I, it's true that there's no connection between the real space and the space that people produce and what architects do as formal housing. Formal housing is not bad by itself, it's the way we do it sometimes. Uh, so I want you to uh, tell us a little bit more about what are, what, from your findings, what kind of architecture, like space distribution, uh, the organization of the spaces has this informal unit. Like the one, the last slides that you showed us. Thanks. I like your question, because usually I have a technical question, and this is like for general. I have to say that uh, when on field I spend as much time as uh, women and, uh, and uh, men, um, I didn't get exactly what you implied with your question, but the thing is that when we did the awareness campaign, when we started to promote the project, many more the women come, because they were that one that they got interest, especially when there is money involved, because in the Indian settlement often is the is the are women that hold the financial situation of the house. Of course, when we were at work, uh, you saw some picture when we were monitoring construction, and that was the main reason that the side out it is usually a man. But the other two people that work with them are often women, so we also work with them. And finally, the, the, the homeowners was always around, and so maybe the, the husband was working on the top, helping the mason, and the, 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 the wife was killing me with this sweet uh, chai tea that they keep offering to, to me every time. So, I mean, it's, uh, I understand your question, I will reflect on it, but uh, I want to say that there was no a, a strong exclusion of one or the other side. No, 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 no,
the road and that's why yeah. yeah. we need to be transparent but if you run a meeting, we will get you. Yeah, but that, that's the, exactly the different role that men and women have in the society. And children, is for example, because they're very involved with different roles <laughs> in the family, it's not just women. So what about the teenagers or, or the young children? It depends. They could work. Uh, honestly, they were hardly involved in their construction. So mm -hmm. if they were little, they were playing, have to play with us also. If they were uh, teenagers, they were on their own. Or their own. Hardly involved in the process. Only sometimes when there were people working with some widows, so the, the, the son, even if he was 15 or 13, he was acting like the man of the house. Uh, we have a question. I just want to clarify. You wanted to point out the differences between the formal housing and how it's uh, formal settlement? No, just to explain a little bit more about the architecture of the informal settlement. Okay. Uh, well, it differs from uh, place to place in the So you identify like four different types? Yes. Yeah. So just tell us more about those. Well, uh, this one slum actually, when I went there, I thought it's all just one big slum. And then I realized that actually there are these differences. And the differences because all these communities have different provisions. One is a community that's entirely from North India. It's entirely family run. So the community of Washington is all family run. There are about 5,000 people that are all from the same village in North India who come down. And they've lived the community of theirs together um, with their uncles and their brothers, it's all built um, by the people themselves. And it is very different from the community that's just next door, because that's migrants from a completely different part of India. And those people are not involved in this washing industry, they're actually working in offices or they're doing some of the in the city. So the way that their houses are built reflects the sort of change. So the washermen really need the roofs, so they don't have any sloping roofs because they need the roofs to get on top, to dry the clothes, or to store materials. Whereas the other people don't need that because that's predominantly residential. So what they need is actually completely different from what the washermen community need. They might need maybe access to a school, or they might need um, better roads or better sanitation, but what the community needs is completely different. They need space to actually carry out doing what they're doing. So there are these differences that exist, and they all sort of coexist. Thank you. Yeah, well, we should do it without my people now, so you guys, that's right. So don't be here. Confronting me from that. I'm voting for my people, that's fine. But sure, it's still part of the game. So you should shout. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm Will, and I'm here. I have a question for the Marco. I have been following I'm from the Mali, and I have been following your project for quite some time. I'm happy to see you know, a very really good friend in the picture smiling in the office. And, but uh, I was always uh, wondering, even talking to him, uh, about when you said in the beginning that uh, you should have a right to technical and uh, support, just as you have right to help in education. But if you don't have right to help in education, you need right to start with it. And then it brings me to this idea when you said there are those cousins and a friend of a friend who's there, who has this limited uh, knowledge of building the uh, room or house. They bring them, they build it, and it falls off. So are you working with? Are you uh, like an architect coming in, taking over, even talking to, even building with people who are using this house? But are you also working with this network of cousins and friends of friends? So when you move out of this uh, community or slum to a different place, or, to, or when you expand, you leave this knowledge behind with the already existing system that is kind of inherent. Because I don't think it is, it's going anywhere. Even if you build two houses or 50 houses, there are still 200 more being built by those cousins in front of So I was just wondering, are you actually forcefully or alluring them into this knowledge? Yes. Yeah, that's the key point of uh, the old idea of how to catalyze this, this thing. Again, as I answered, very like, 
you need the government in the end, but I also believe that market-based solution, because our idea to put a service that could be very affordable for them, could help them. And so our fault was a test. It was partnering with the microfinance institution in this, and if you are in India, you may know about the big crisis that microfinance faced. Uh, it was exactly that period, and the microfinance just asked us, can you hire 40 engineers, and can we go to other 60 cities to do this? Because there was lots of requests. So that would have been a different impact. But what was important for us was like uh, see that cousin of the, our client was coming to us and say, can you come and tell us how to build? We didn't want the money. We would. So there was interest in technical assistance. How to leave something there, you need to be structured. And that's the next phase that we are trying to enter now, where we are trying to really like to do a, to provide a training to the meeting, to leave them some macro, to leave them some uh, number that they can call so that they can continue and they can exchange this knowledge. I agree, what we did was just an interaction with a very small ecosystem. What we saw that this ecosystem respond, like a self respond to some, some additions that you bring to the board. So there was this kind of reaction. And to keep this alive, we need to work on different areas. Now we're trying to test if working with Amazon is a correct way, is the best way to impact with the environment. And that's what we try to test with the MIT. But maybe awareness campaign could have better like uh, impact because you work on demand and uh, supply. But that's that's a progress uh, project that is going on that is on going so. I would say also that 
if we want to scale it up toward the, the authorities, toward the high, higher level, toward the wide scale, uh, the products of uh, the design are really what uh, make, uh, make this process is able to be visible at the wider scale to more the wider community in the or what I showed you that the uh, public presentations are the uh, outcomes that the, you know, the community share again with the future part with the future partners, etc. So let's say if uh, if we were if we were there, if we were sitting around the table with the paper, etc., we would have to be a communication tool between us and the community and making a step back between the community and the among themselves. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, uh, I would like just for, for the video because we don't want to... Uh, so that not... Question. Yeah, question. Okay. Or, <laughs> now the discussion is going towards how to get things done, which is, was one of our primary goals as well. But then, David, you once mentioned that uh, you raised, uh, you gained commitment on the process. It was one project with this square, and I think it was one of the, maybe the skateboard or even before. So you gained commitment, you started very small, very small part, but it just happened. So could you elaborate on how you get commitment to, to get a project done in such a way? Well, it's, it's like um, most of the projects I showed started with very, they were not uh, ambitious at the beginning. And it was like, uh, the, the, as the resources are not there, uh, you, some communities, some collectives, some uh, uh, group of human uh, beings have the idea and the, the goal to, to promote some kind of situation. But at the beginning, they don't know where we were. We are going to be able to get. It's, it's, uh, it's so uh, it's the it's kind of a process, an adventure. So. You, you you get to the I mean you, it's more like the 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 trajectory than, than the goal and for example uh, with the with the two skate parks with the first one and with the second one happened more or less the same when we were called to help with the process the idea was to do a simple thing because we were thinking about getting I don't know about 10 20 thousand euros finally through self construction self-building and also through recycling and, but very very much also because of this kind of uh, collective illusion this kind of you know motivation that goes on it comes with the idea oh maybe we can do it in concrete because concrete is much better but is it is it in, in our in, we, can we reach that is, is it possible for us so it's kind of a question that has to be answered, and we have to measure the energies. <laughs> so we ask the people, I mean, you want to be there all the summer working with it? Because if you do that, you, you will get it. And with the other park, we started with the little corner down there with a the skate park. And, and we got the, the collaboration of some uh, landscape architects that also wanted to work with this uh, how you say, like it's a kind of workshop framework. So the guys, I mean the young people wanted to go on to, to make it more ambitious and to plan all the part and to be part of this decision, the decision making of how to design the part. So this is about design also. So finally, is it, it is like this, but it's not conceived from the beginning. It's not marked from the beginning. It's more like a, a process. Okay. I. It, it's very actually, I have to pause that. So uh, it's, uh, it's very nice to see that there are a lot of questions. But we will have a more uh, a longer discussion as well after the next session presentation. But now we, we have to go for a break, we talk the break. We continue. Once more, I can uh, just really thank, uh, thank you to our, uh, thank you to our wonderful.